How hard was that? Because I know because obviously watching your videos and reading your books, mm. you you done the test for the the special forces twice. Yeah, this is all about the mindset. This is the stuff that yeah. I love. So you were yeah. so close to passing. And then the second mm. time you had an injury, but we'll go right through from the start of it. The first time you've done it, how intense was it? Is it six months? Yeah, six months. Um, six months. And I always say it's the hardest thing I've ever chosen to do. And that's, um, it's not the, the hardest thing I've done, but I chose to do this. You know what I mean? And it was like, but really what happened is because I joined the SBS, the first selection I did, I'm, I'm one of three people in the world to have done the old sp- special boat service selection and the new SAS one because they, they sort of amalgamated and it's all one selection now. So the first one was an SBS one. And um, I have to say, I'm, I'm sorry to anyone that's, that's offended, but the fucking, that was the hardest thing ever, ever I've ever done. Didn't know what was going on one day to the next, didn't sleep for days. And it was just absolutely, man, just thrashed, thrashed and thrashed, you know, in, in canoes, carrying canoes, digging canoes in the ground. It was just mental, you know, it's just under pressure all day long. And then, then we went off to the jungle. That's when you did, used to join uh, the SAS and do that joint selection process in the jungle. So six weeks in there, then you used to come out, do some skills training. The last thing you do is escape and evasion. And it was um, in the escape and evasion that we're escaping across Wales and, um, we had an altercation with a Welsh farmer. <laughs> and it's funny because I always wonder whether that bloke is listening, but we ended up going into a barn and you're not supposed to have any civilian contact whatsoever. Everyone cheats and it's just the name of the game, but don't get caught. And then we got a lift off the guy. Um, and then that now, you know, we were trying to get out of his car. We couldn't get out of the back and he's pissed out his face. He had his, his handyman was driving the car and, um, we managed, we were like, ah, Glenn, let us out, let us out. He said, I'll let you out, lads. And we could hear him get out the car, and then we heard this thud. And um, and then one of the lads managed to smack the doors open. We ran off, and then two days later, we're pulled in and given a field interrogation, and they knew exactly what had, what had been happening. And what had happened, the guy had fallen out of the car, smashed his head on the floor, gone to hospital and said that he'd been beaten up by the SAS. Yeah. And then we're off the course. Fucking two how, days. Two days after six months. And how did that affect you then? Were you thinking game over? Home well, time? Mate, I mean, that for me, when I started selection, it was like, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to be a civilian. And it was that officer that changed my, you know. There was a lot of training, obviously. There was like a couple, of, a couple, three months of training to actually start. So it was a nine-month process. To get to the end then... And then be sent back. I was sent back to four five commando up in Scotland, Arbroath. And um, going back there, it was like I was I was losing all fucking motivation whatsoever. And because you know that sort of furnace that was burning for, of passion to to be a special forces soldier. And I've always been one of these people that focuses on the on the on the end result. I don't look at the journey. Yeah. You can't control the journey. But I felt it, I can always fall in love. It's something I've always been able to do. I still do it to this day. I actually experiences it experience that like i've already achieved it you know and I add emotions to that and, and and make it very real and that's the one thing that pulls me through and i had that dream you know that dream of being a special forces soldier how that would change my whole life how that would make me feel how you know all kinds of stuff and and that was the one thing you know that fire was 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 just embers but then i got back to four five and it was going back there and it was actually hearing those words again in my head you'll regret it for the rest of your life and it was all, almost like there's unfinished business i need something you know i got so far to the end that how could i just walk out so those embers that were still burning um i managed to recreate you know get them going again before i knew it was a, it was a it's a fucking a fire of of passion to achieve it again and and i was back on there and then the, the second time round was just fraught with fucking absolute. Was it harder the horrendous. second time because you know you were getting yourself into it, or was it easier? Easier. Was it? Yeah, it was easier because, like the I was then I then did the joint selection. Now the joint selection is, you know, every day that's what's going to happen. So I know what's going to happen tomorrow, the day after. When I did SBS selection, you don't know what's you don't you haven't got a clue what's going on. You know what I mean? So that knowing, being able to know that tomorrow is like a, a twenty k yomp. Uh, the day after that's going to be 30k then it's for you know whatever it is we knew we knew the path in front of us when you don't know the path in front of us it creates all kinds of self-doubt anxiety and all that kind of stuff but for me you know that doing that selection 
and going to the Brecon Beacons and doing their selection, it would have gone fine if it wasn't for the fact I fucking near enough broke my leg or my ankle. I tw- my ankle did a 90 degree. Tw- I could hear all the tendons going. And, um, you know, at that point, they tried to take me off and said, look, you've, you're not going to pass. They said, if, if you fail a march because of that, you'll never be able to come back again because I'd already done it once. And they were like, I just, I just know in my head that there was no way I was coming back. This was the last time. I wouldn't be coming back again. Has anybody ever come back for a third time? No, you just can't. You're not allowed. Oh, do you not? No. So it was now or never? Now or never. So for me, it was like, I'm, I'm not going to sort of say, yeah, I'm coming off with a medical withdrawal. That means that wouldn't, you know, I could have had another go. I just know in my head that I didn't have it there to come back again. How long was the march you had to do? Well, I mean, you do it days and days and days. So the first one, I think that was something like a 20k yomp, that first one was, with packs, you know, weight, weapons, everything. And that's when I went over my ankle. And that, that day, I mean, the, my ankle swelled up massively. And, uh, but that night I just strapped it up, took loads of brufin, and, um, mate, I was crying the next day through, through, through the Elam Valley, which is, they call it baby's heads, because it's just like the, the ground is so uneven. It's like, it's horrendous. And I can remember crying all the way through that, but I made the times. I made the times. And then slowly over that time, I, you know, I managed to do that every day. And then the, my ankle started to get a bit stronger, stronger, stronger. But it, it was fucking horrendous. How many people do these courses? Um, well, you're looking around about 260 and about five people pass every course. And you passed with your feet fucked as well. Yeah. See, going through yeah. this sort of intensity, did that... Obviously, you're battling with your mindset. Does that make mm. your mind stronger or does, it, or does it make it more kind of all over the place because of what you're putting yourself through? You know what? Through? I, was, I was seeing people. It, it, it interested me. I was watching people that people want to find an excuse so they don't have to blame. that uh, the, They don't want to have, have to be seen that they haven't got the mental robustness to complete it because special forces selection, right? You have to be fit, yeah, but it's it's really about being able to maintain being in a uh, state of discomfort for long, long periods of time. You know what I mean? You can get the fittest person in the world to come and do special forces selection, but there's such a level of discomfort. You chuck a pack on the back, you make sure they're cold for extended period of, periods of times and they'll just fall apart. So for me, it's just, and I could see so many people, you know, they come off with a little spray and, oh, that's me, I'm done. And I just saw these people thinking, fucking, yeah, that's just weak. I just knew that my, my leg was bust, you know, it was fucking so painful. And I was seeing people with little greys and a little limp and going, oh, no, no, it's not for me. I mean, you, your feet, are, are, you take your socks off and half your foot comes off with it every night. You know, the bliss doesn't, so you, your feet are just raw. So each march, every march you do, you're like, you have to get through about two hours of pain just to get over the pain barrier. You know, every day it's just horrendous pain. So, but you have to be able to put up with that yeah. to keep on going. But does that show you how far human beings can go when they actually put their yeah. mind to it? See the people who passed with you. Mm. Did you know they? Did you see something in them that they would pass, or, or did people surprise you? That no, I, no, I'm surprised yeah. with so many people that I yeah. see so many strong people mm. that become so weak, and yeah. you, you're surprised that people go, "Fuck me, you're really strong mentally." Yeah, did you? Was it a surprise to you who passed with you? No, it's not. I mean, it wasn't so much a surprise because it's, a, it's, it's an ongoing process where you can see people dropping by the wayside, but you can't predict it from day one. You can't say, well, he looks fit, so he's going to pass. Because mm-hmm. you don't know what's going on up here. You know what I mean? It's like the ones that shine through at the end, you know, you couldn't predict that. You can obviously, you know, fitness is one thing. You, if someone turns up and they're, they're not fit, then it's clear that that fit, their physical ability is going to hold them back and they're not going to pass. But it's so hard to say that he's going to pass, he's going to pass. It's like watching the show on, on TV, you know, SAS who does wins, everyone goes, oh, I thought he passed because he was really fit. And it's like that's got, that's a, that plays a small part. You know, it's, you've got to have so much mental strength to be able to carry on when, and try and draw that extra 40, 50, 60% when times get shit, you know, you've got to understand that we're wired to avoid any kind of stress, discomfort, and our minds will steer us away from anything that's going to cause us that, you know, so our minds are always looking for the easy way out, always, and it's about being able to, to beat that, it's about being able to beat that, that's, I mean, I I talk a a lot about the psychology of everything, you know, it's like I understood that, that, you know, we are always looking for that, um, we're always looking to avoid the stress and discomfort and uh, any kind of shortcut we can take, we will do. So it's, it's, I think when you understand how we work as humans, 
It's like I always say, look, how a mechanic can't fix a car, I can't fix a motorbike, any kind of machine until he understands how it works. It's no different to us, you know what I mean? No different to us humans. As soon as we understand what's going on up here and, and how to work with it, we learn to work with our weaknesses as well as our strengths. That helps us get through everything. Yeah.